If you've ever wanted to start an orchard, but you don't even know how to plant a tree, then this video is for you. Kevin Espiritu here from Epic Gardening, where it's my goal to help you grow a greener thumb. And I could not be more excited because right next to me is the very first tree that's gonna be going into the orchard here at the Epic Homestead. It's a Washington Naval Orange. So today's video is all about planting a citrus tree from start to finish. We're gonna talk about tree selection. We're gonna talk about climate. We're gonna talk the exact process of how to plant in the hole. And at the end of the video, we'll even give you some post care tips for pruning and just a couple things that might be a little hard to do as a fruit tree owner but are necessary to ensure a solid harvest for many years to come so without further ado cultivate that like button and i will personally make you a fresh orange juice straight from my orchard and let's get into the video the very first consideration of course is your own climate does it make sense to plant your citrus in the ground like i'm about to do or should you be growing it in a container now citrus loves a warmer climate and so i would say unless you're in zone eight or above it's probably a good idea to keep it in a container maybe put it on a dolly so that you can move it in and out in accordance with the natural swings of temperature as you get to fall and winter it's just not going to like to be in those conditions now there are some things you can do to control that for example if you have a big brick wall or something like that you could actually plant it pretty close to that wall and that wall will radiate some heat and you can bump your climate up just a little bit by doing it like that so you can push maybe a zone seven to a zone eight or maybe even grow it in a green greenhouse and you get a little bit of buffer there but I would say in those colder climates citrus in containers where you can move it in and out is a good idea now if you're in a climate more like mine then in the ground is the ideal place for them they're going to absolutely love it as far as location I've selected a very exposed area here right next to the old citrus tree this is a grapefruit and a lemon sort of combined together we're going to be doing a video about that at some point because they need a lot of love but i'm about three or four feet away from here and i'm going to keep this very well pruned which we'll talk about again in the future but this is my location south is this way north is this way we've got good exposure and now we want to get it into the ground but because this is one of my first times planting a potted fruit tree from scratch i've called in my friend cameron from the busy gardener to help provide some pointers so here's the man himself cameron from the busy gardener i've learned a lot from cameron and you're gonna learn a lot from cameron as we talk about planting the citrus tree so cameron you've done a lot of citrus you've got what like 80 trees and, yeah. and bushes at your place it's gotten a little nuts it's gotten crazy and and, and you know he's infected me with the bugs so what do we need to know, just the bare bones basics, when you're taking a potted tree like this, not a bare root, potted fruit tree, citrus, where's, where do I even begin? Yeah, well, citrus is a wonderful option. It's an evergreen option. And so you wanna plant that into place like all of your fruit trees where it's gonna get a lot of sun. Um, this is a great location right here, but when you're planting it, especially when it's a young tree like this, you wanna ensure that you're planting it with, uh, if there's a bud union where you notice where the main, um, areas have, have, have gotten grafted on. You want that to be facing to the north because that's an area that could be uh, experiencing some, some damage. So you want to face it to the north because it's going to be a little more shaded from the sun. It'll be more protected. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that can, you don't want any, any area for that tree to get opened up to anything. Um, you want to make sure that the planting depth, sometimes as you look on the tree, you'll see that there is an area where it's been grafted onto an existing root stock. So you'll see a different type of wood below. You always want to make sure that that part is planted above the ground. And so I like to say that those things should be planted a few inches above the ground. Um, and then you're able to then mound some soil up right. if you need to. And that's different from, I mean, in the annual garden, you're most of the time you're just matching your transplant height to the height of whatever container it's in. So if I've got this much soil in my little pot and I'm putting a broccoli in the ground, I'm just going to match it right there. And so yes. it's a big difference in citrus is you're actually bumping up this, the soil line's probably right here on the pot, right. and I'm gonna bump it to about there. I'm gonna plant only yeah. about there or so. And frankly, depending on the type of soil that you have, if you have, like you mentioned, you have more clayish soil here, right, right. which doesn't drain as quickly, and you want uh, to make sure that it doesn't drown because trees need to breathe as well. Yep. So the reason you want to put that up a little bit is it's gonna prevent, allow some water to kind of run off of that yep. and not drown those roots. Um, but and you're able to make up the difference with some mounded soil if you need to. That's what I was going to say is the natural question I think someone has there is then, okay, well, aren't a ton of the roots just sticking out of the ground and is that going to damage the plant? Yeah, you want to make sure you, want to make sure you do that because when you plant in, a, uh, in the ground like this, you're going to notice that over time it's going to settle. All of that soil that you disturbed underneath it is going to begin to settle. And so even though you planted it two, three, four inches above the, above the grade, you'll notice that over time it's going to settle a little bit as well. Okay. 
So what we want to do now is I've got a bunch of chips here on the ground. We'll grab the rake, we'll clear the chips off, kind of look at the planting site, and then we'll get to digging. Let's do it. All right. I've got my bow rake here. I'm going to clear this mulch away, but I thought, Cameron, we should talk because I think a lot of people are going to say, wow, there's a tree right here. That seems a little close. Citrus can get really big. So maybe you could share a little bit about spacing, some soil considerations as we clear this area out. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so citrus is a wonderful type of fruit in the sense that it grows almost more as a shrub than it does like your traditional tree. I know you often will see them sold in these garden centers as, you know, you see this trunk going up and then this huge canopy up there. But they, if you look at the commercial growers, they will generally go all the way down to the ground with evergreen foliage. And so um, these can actually be trained as a shrub. And so what you're going to be doing, Kevin, is eventually uh, as we plant these things, um, kind of making making a hedge as as your option here. Yeah, it's going to be a yeah. wonderful evergreen hedge well, of fruits. What you, what you were telling me that I thought was really nice was I'm growing a lot of different fruits in this property and citrus, like you said, it's evergreen, especially here in my zone. And so if I plant it as this hedge and keep them low and grow it down below, right, I get this nice sort of blockade from the street, yep. from the from like the urban environment. And so I get this sort of oasis type of planting, right? Yeah. yeah. And if you plant some things that are deciduous, you'll always have that green backdrop, which is there. So that's one really nice thing about citrus is being able to plant. Um, and, and the way that they grow is as an evergreen hedge. You can even come through with hedge clippers, really, and just keep it trained like that. Um, a nice thing is that as you plant a, a number of them, you can just plant them pretty close. And that's what we're going to be doing. Right, um, right. Planting three to minimum of three feet, but you know, you can do five feet, eight feet, whatever. And as they grow into each other. Yeah. How am I looking? Is there a rule on, on, on width when I'm planting or am I yeah. fine with this, this like maybe three square foot area? That's actually even in more than enough. You usually want to go about twice as big as the width of the pot that you're planting. Okay. This 15 gallon pot is maybe 18 inches across. So having like two, three feet across is perfect. We're going to go to about the depth of the actual pot itself. So we're not going twice, twice wide, twice deep, like no. some people would recommend. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. You really want depth. A lot of these roots actually travel laterally instead of yeah. just going straight down. Like you'd sometimes think a tree would. Okay. So this is a, a great time to start digging. Um, yeah. In terms of soil considerations, they like a well draining soil. And so when you've got clay, you're going to want to probably plant it a little bit higher than you would in a, like a very sandy loam type of soil. Okay. So if I was in sandy loam, which I'm not, unfortunately, uh, I would plant maybe a couple inches above. And in this case, maybe we go three or four. Yeah, thinking? I think so. Okay. Yeah. They like to, ultimately they like the soil to be moist, but they don't want to be wet. Yeah. So they prefer like a deep watering that then kind of has a chance to dry a little bit as opposed to just like always okay. being wet. Yeah. Okay. So let's get to digging then. Fortunately, it just rained. So Oh, this is the awesome. soil comes in actually really easily. Come on. I'm so jealous. Look at that. You've seen my my soil just full of rocks. So yeah. to see a shovel go all the way down and come up is incredible. Well, we timed this very perfectly because we got probably most of the rain we'll get this spring just a little bit ago. Yeah. Uh, and so I even see, did I see a worm? Did I see an earthworm? I totally saw a worm. I Where think I saw a worm. worm. Here's a worm. You have a bunch of worms in here. Oh my God. Look at this. Oh, dude, this is actually crazy. You know what? Guys, this is the power of the mulch. If you watch it's the homesteading really cool. channel, a company came and cleared all the mulch off of my neighbor's yard. And I just said, hey, instead of bringing it to the dump, just <laughs> mulch it directly into my yard. And they did that. And so we've been sitting on probably six to eight inches of wood chip mulch, plus getting the rains, which means the microorganisms are going to start coming in. Those worms that we see here are going to come in. So honestly, it is a little clay, but I think the citrus will probably be pretty happy. It's living soil. Totally. And, and putting that mulch on there uh, makes such a, such a difference in terms of helping the soil beneath it to start breaking down, being friendlier to, uh, to, to planting, bioactivity, things like that. Yeah. Cool. Hey, I'm stoked. This is actually a lot easier to dig into than I expected it would be. That's so wonderful. So we'll just kind of keep this because this is probably a good time to talk about it. A lot of people are going to say, okay, what are you going to put in that hole? Are you juicing it up with compost? Are you juicing it up with bone meals and certain amendments? And it seems to me that the theory is don't do that too much because you're going to condition the plant to be in its safe little bubble, get it used to the native soil and maybe top amend. Just like you're saying, the traditional wisdom used to be to amend everything and almost just put compost in. And now they're saying that you actually shouldn't put anything in the hole at all. And if you're going to do anything to do some stuff over the top after you've put the mulch back, frankly, they, they even are saying like UC um, Department of Agriculture says that you shouldn't even fertilize them for the first few till you see a few inches of growth, uh, because that's going to contribute to a lot of leafy growth and stem growth where you really want the plant to emphasize lots of root growth and really get established. Especially in its first year, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. Well, let's finish digging this hole out. We'll get to planting. 
Okay, I think we have a deep enough hole, especially because we're burying it a little bit higher, but the easiest way to check, of course, is to just grab the pot and give it a test fit. That's probably a little high still, yeah? A yeah, we've high. got about six inches more yeah. to go. So let's, let's grab it a little bit more down here. And maybe, Cam, while I dig this out, let's talk a little bit about how do I get it out of that pot in a way that doesn't damage the roots, doesn't damage the plant? Yeah. So when it comes to a potted plant like this, one way that a lot of times is, is recommended is to, with like a sharp knife, especially if you're dealing with a thinner, like five gallon pot, is to use like a box cutter to be able to just slice down the pot and try to kind of peel it away from it. Cause you're trying to not damage that root structure underneath. But what I also like to do, um, and we'll demonstrate this in a little bit, is to put it on its side, kind of near the edge of the hole, roll it around and kind of hit the sides of it to let the soil detach from the sides and kind of loosen up around the edges. And then once we get nearer the pot, we'll be able to gently kind of tip this and guide it out. One thing you never really want to do is to pull a, pull a tree up by its trunk. You never want it supporting that weight because it'll often damage the root structure underneath with that heavy soil ball beneath it. Ideally, you're going to want to, especially on a smaller pot, just cut that thing straight open. Okay. Or on this, just loosen up the sides, roll it around gently. And then um, once we're ready for it, we'll be able to tip in. Something as you're digging, Kevin, is yeah. it's going to seem like when it's in the pot, it's a lot higher, but a lot of times you'll lose some of the soil. Right. So you'll find so you get a couple lower. inches there. Yeah. So here's a question that I think people are going to have is I'm now starting to struggle, right? Because the it rained, but it didn't rain, didn't permeate that deep. How do I loosen up that soil? Is it a good idea to grab the hose, fill it up, sit there for an hour, let it drain through, and then just keep digging it out? It could. I mean, it really depends on your soil. If your soil benefits and loosens up from having the water, then yeah, you could do that. Yeah. You could go through kind of like you're doing right now with your shovel tip and just kind of wiggle it around to get yourself a little bit more purchase. Yep. You could use, I think we brought some out here, either like a little cultivator. You could use something like this cultivator to go through and just kind of dig in there and just kind of bust up the bottom. But I mean, you're going to have the most leverage with a shovel. So even though it starts becoming a little bit harder work. Yeah. I'm just kind of coming this. around and like hugging the side and then pulling out getting a little scrape going and then just shoveling that out. Yeah. And because we're going for width, um, once you get really the middle of it kind of cleared out, it's okay if there's a little bit more soil on the sides. Okay, cool. So let's, yeah, let's bring a shoveler to out of there and see if this, how this thing sits in there now. Yep. So last shovel and then we'll do a test fit here again. I think I probably got at least a couple more inches out of there. Yeah. Yep. I think that's going to look pretty good. That'll look good. Let's see here. All right. Oh that yeah. That looks good. That that's looks perfect. good. Uh, that looks good actually from this yeah, side. That yeah. looks good. Okay, cool. Well, next step is to get it out of the pot. We'll talk filling the hole. Again, we'll touch on some of the amendments, but let's just get to it. Awesome. Okay, let's get it out of the pot. Probably a, like a fraught, sensitive moment for a lot of gardeners. <laughs> this is the moment of truth. You've spent right? some money on this this plant and, and you don't want to damage it before it even begins its life. So let's do this in, in the gentlest way possible. Okay, so we want to tip this kind of and lay it against the side here. And we almost want the pot to take on a different shape a little bit, almost mm. kind of get a little, a little more squished. oval. Yeah. Yep. And that'll help move your hand. I'll, I'll hit right where your hand is at. Okay. Sometimes I'll rotate it a little bit, let it loosen up on the other side. Okay. Now this I'm supporting this trunk. I'm not yanking it. Mm -hmm. uh, what I'm doing is I'm just trying to help guide it. So if you're able to, I'll even, grab these little drainage holes. Yep. Yep. And I'm even kind of going around the side a little bit here. Oh, I can get a purchase there. Okay. And I want, let's, uh-huh. There, there you go. go. So we're just guiding this out. Now, if I'm a solo gardener, before we keep going, I, can I just cut this out? Yeah. Yeah, okay. That's easier. If you're finding that this is really scary and it's yeah. not working out, get something sharp, be safe with it, and cut that thing. Just exacto straight down. Yep. Okay. All right, ready? Okay, good. There we go. Wow, this is awesome. So let's talk then about why it's awesome. What, what's going on with the root structure? I'm seeing not a lot of pot boundness here. Yes. Yeah, what, that's exactly it. What we're seeing is the roots are starting to kind of find the sides of where the pot was, but not having any of that swirling going on that could be so damaging to a tree after it's planted. Dare I say, it almost feels like the perfect time to have been repotting this, 100%. right? Yeah. Something that you do want to do with, uh, with these is to, you do want to agitate the sides. We want these yeah. roots to not be com comfortable with the size mm -hmm. and the shape of that pot. And so what we do is we just, with our hand even, you can just disturb the roots, the bottom of it, and that'll get them kind of activated and looking for some for so some new area. here's the here's the question maybe you're not as lucky to have a pot or a, a potted citrus that was this optimal and you are root bound 
I think we're very comfortable pruning the tops of our plants and our trees, but we're very scared sometimes to prune the bottom. Yeah. What should someone know about pruning, root pruning, I guess, before it gets into the ground? Is that something they need to do? Yeah, so that, that can be something that you do. If you have a tree and you notice that the roots are totally root bound, there's heavy binding, there's a lot of roots here, and you're not able to easily just break it up like we are in this case, you can do that with a, a nice sharp knife. You can go into a couple inches of that root you know, start maybe halfway up the tree and just cut a couple inches into the soil, mm. into the roots and just cut those up at least on two sides. You can do three, four, hey, look a little worm. <laughs> we got some worm in there too. What about, so like a, a really pop down plant, right, is gonna have some circling at the bottom. Would you come through and just cut through it and leave it intact? Or would you actually like trim off a really clumped mass at the bottom? What you may wanna do is to come through and just cut it straight down the middle. Mm -hmm. And if you're able to, you notice that even as we're doing this, we're trying to get the roots to look out. Yep. And yep. so if you notice that that's there, try to just open that system up. I mean, if you're getting a tree that's really root and pot bound, the odds are stacked a little bit more against you yeah. than they are in this case. Yeah. Um, so you're really doing all that you can to get that tree doing okay. Now what you might experience, let's say that the tree gets stressed from that. Yep. Doesn't die, but just gets stressed. You may experience some, some leaf loss. You might experience some fruit drop if you're planting one where you're wanting a bunch of fruit on there. Just know that there, you might see some negative effects. That doesn't mean it's dead. It just means that it's kind of not feeling that great and it may find its way out of there. Okay, cool. Well, we need to tease the rest of these roots out and start kind of test fitting it into the ground. Yeah. Yeah. This is, this is gorgeous. Yeah. I'm looking at all these little feeder roots here. It look really it's nice. Really good. Perfect. And the soil, yeah, it's a good mix of everything here. Do a 180, get the bottom. There. Yeah, we can't actually. I guess we can just do it on this side. Yeah, exactly. So how are we looking? So here's something that I know a lot of people will do is they'll, they'll mound the middle of the hole and let the roots sort of fan down. Is that something we should be thinking about with citrus or no? Yeah, if you notice that your citrus has roots that are open at the bottom, yeah. then it's a good idea to fan them out and have a mound so that way they fan. You want them going away from the middle of the tree. Yep. A lot of times Drainage, like bare yeah. root trees when you get them are a lot of times like that. But citrus usually comes as a pretty good you know root ball like this so yeah but if you if you do have a lot of roots at the bottom the idea of having just a mound almost like a cone mm -hmm. and setting it right on top so that the roots go down on top of that cone would be okay. the way to go cool well let's score the rest of this out and we'll be good to go do i need to be thinking about anything on the side of this hole because we've created again it's semi clay right do i need to sort of score and and you know, texturize the side or yeah. do I leave it as like a sheer clay wall in here? The problem, yeah, exactly. Good point. We can see it here. It's almost very, very smooth in clay, especially when you go down with a shovel, it creates such a smooth edge yeah. that sometimes those roots will go out and go, oh, I'm in another pot. They're hitting like a faux pot. Yeah. <laughs> and then they'll start circling. Yeah. So using something like a, a cultivator or even just your hands to just break up the sides. So that way it's not an entirely smooth surface, but something that is you know, got some texture in it so those roots know that they're hitting something right. isn't another pot. Okay, great. We're close in here on the navel orange and we're close in because we want to show you, you know, there is an orientation concern, right? And so let's talk about that. You've got your rootstock down here below, which is what's growing in the ground and imparting some beneficial qualities to the fruit above. Yes. And then you have your, your graft, right? And you right. want your graft to be in a particular direction. Yeah, th this creates, this graft here is, is a more sensitive area of the tree. And so we want this to be protected from sunburn, from any type of opening, which would bring in any types of diseases or anything. We want to avoid all of that. So we rotate this entire thing so that the graft is facing to the north, which is that way. So when someone is saying, okay, well, I don't even know where the graft is, how can they actually tell? Well, usually you'll notice there's kind of a, a dimple or a bump where mm -hmm. the two types of wood meet. Yep. Um, you'll notice here that there's kind of an old... This is the rootstock, root right? Stock, yeah, right. so they prune that off, prune this rootstock off here, and yeah. then here's our graft right there. Yeah, so you see a departure here. So where you see the kind of exposed area, you can see that there's a more distinctly exposed area back here. We want to hide that from the sun. Okay, cool. So the next step then is to start actually filling it in with soil, right? Yeah, let's rotate this around just a little bit. and. Um, yeah, let's get the soil in here. Okay, and we're just using the soil we dug out. Right, we're not putting any type of amendments, nothing else in that in that pot. So I'm just gonna start dumping it in. Any concern, do I need to be packing it? Do I need to yeah. be, yeah. You wanna create as little settling as possible. So you'll wanna actually, as you're doing this, Kevin, you'll wanna put the, put the soil around it. Yep. Um, and every few inches or so, you tamp it. It's gonna be easier to tamp it and, and kind of just press it down in place. Maybe avoid some of these big chunks. Yeah, just break them up a little bit if you've got clods of dirt. So we'll toss some of this over here. Of course, we're gonna have some extra because we've displaced a lot. And that's okay, because we're gonna be mounding it up a little bit as well yep. to protect these side roots that are here. Yeah, because like you're saying, I mean, a lot of fruit trees will have these sort of lateral surface feeder roots, and that's actually where most of the action is taking place. Yeah, a lot of the, the, 
those that breathe, the feeder roots are all often nearer the surface than way down below. Okay, so we're getting kind of close. Yeah. We'll we're going to have to mound up. Is there any concern then about, I mean, I'm seeing some root structure right here, right? Am I going to want to be covering that with some yes. soil? Yeah. And how uh, far up can I go? With citrus specifically, you want this to be roughly level with whatever this, the soil is that you're doing. Yeah. But you never ever want to go above where the graft is. Okay. Nowhere near the graft, but we are getting close to the surface of the actual citrus tree. Right. Oh, now would be a good time also, before we do anything else, is yeah. to just kind of stand over the top of it and make sure that this tree is straight, straight or growing up. in the direction that you want while yeah. it's still really yeah. low. Good call. So I'm seeing it kind of edging a little bit yes. out this way, so maybe we'll we'll kind of do this. Right, and then you put your foot and back there. Over here. There you go. Yep. So we'll get it nice and straight, because remember, you're kind of setting this in stone for a decade, decades. decades or more, so you know, make sure you do it right. The mother navel tree that this, all navel trees have come from is still alive from the 1800s in oh, Riverside, wow. California. Wow. And so these are very long lived trees when they're taken care of. So you want that thing straight. Now at this point, am I thinking don't fertilize, just add some wood chip mulch on top? Or could this be a time if I chose to add some choice amendments to the top here? You know, the amendments that I would consider for this would be things that improve the soil more than feed the tree. Yeah. Again, we don't want any leafy structure up top. What we want is the tree to emphasize its rooting. And so um, you want stuff that is not going to provide nitrogen to the system because yeah. nitrogen is going to make this grow. Yeah. But if there are some things you want to amend the top of the soil with that are going to go in and help those beneficial things beneath the soil, it's totally okay to do that. So maybe like we could, in theory, do like maybe an inch, inch and a half, two inches of compost and then throw some chips on top for some nice like sort of soil life building. Well, compost is going to feed it. Yeah. That, that's, I mean, it's, it's so hard because th this tree, citrus loves nitrogen. Yeah. It's going to need nitrogen but not when it's first planted. Okay. So this might be a thing, if you come out and notice that you've got six or eight inches of growth, come and bring your compost all you want. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Well, it's time to talk about mulch then. Sweet. So our Washington navel is in the ground. Actually, I would say it looks a little healthier than I would expect it to for a, a new planting. So we're off to a good start. Now, before we water it in, there's one thing that you can do. It's in this little jar here. It's called whitewashing the tree, which basically protects it from sun scalding, especially a young subtropical tree. So we use this one, Cameron and I both really like this one from Ivy Organics, their three-in-one or their whitewash product. But it's an optional step. I wouldn't say it's absolutely mandatory, but it's gonna get a, a tree off to a better start by just protecting it, right? Yeah, especially in the hotter climates. These, yeah. these are subtropicals like citrus and avocado. They're used to growing among a lot of other trees. And so their bark can be a little bit more sensitive. And so using a whitewash like this, or even like an interior white latex paint, mixed 50% water, 50% paint, that can work too, but an organic option is like- Probably the better option, is. yeah. Okay, so now we're watering it. Is there anything that we actually have to know? Like, do we water for a certain amount of time? Are we trying to get to a certain depth? Or are we just getting it wet? The idea of watering your plant in is that as you water, it's going to get all of those air pockets out of there and allow the roots to make really good contact with the soil around them. So you're going to want to give it a good deep watering till the point where you feel like it might be saturated all the way down. Through. Okay, cool. Let's get to it. watered in but like I said we displaced a lot of the dirt by planting the actual tree in there so we have some dirt here and what we're gonna want to do is just lightly rake this over the top because like Cameron was saying when you water it in you're removing a lot of those air pockets we're seeing some root exposure here after that nice healthy watering and we we just have some extra topsoil here to rake over before we put our mulch on so we're just gonna drag it over it's okay if we get some chips in there you don't want to bury the chips too deeply because they're gonna start stealing nitrogen but probably not a big deal to have a, a, a few here and then Cam, is there anything I need to know when I'm dragging my wood chip mulch back? First of all, is wood chip mulch the ideal mulch? Is there a better mulch? And if, if it is, am I going two inches, five inches? Am I keeping it close to the trunk? All that kind of stuff. Yeah, mulch is a wonderful thing. Probably one of the best things you can do for your fruit trees. And so using a good hardwood chip mulch is your ideal mulch. Although. I kind of like to say the, the mulch that's the best mulch is the one that you'll actually use. Yeah, the one that you've got around yeah, at least. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So, but if you're able to, um, if you've got some mulch or have access to some mulch, something that isn't dyed, you know, the ideal stuff is what like arborists will use, landscape guys will create, mm -hmm. like what you had sprayed into your yard here. All, all the stuff we're actually going over is probably an ideal mulch. It's a hardwood Chinese elm mulch. Yeah. Uh, and it's, it's relatively fresh. It's chopped up to a nice sort of consistency. And it's a varied texture, which I think is kind of important. You don't yeah. want like one huge chunks. You don't want like all finely ground chunks. Yeah. You, it, when they're different sizes, it avoids it all getting compacted. So having yeah. this, something that's a bunch of varied sizes is perfect. And what you're looking for with your mulch is about uh, four inches is ideal. Three to four inches is ideal. You can go a little heavier. Um, you really don't want to go much lighter. 
Um, but what this is going to do is going to help with your soil temps, your the, all the stuff happening underneath, like we saw those earthworms earlier, yep. and uh, it's going to make your tree a lot happier. It's going to uh, keep moisture there, keep that when that sun is baking down, keep from that root system drying out. So mulch is a wonderful thing. Do I need to be pulling this away from the trunk just a bit? Yeah, yeah. you want to be about four to six inches away from the trunk, and that'll prevent any fungus from happening or crown rot or anything like that. But it. It, so we're in a good spot here then. Yeah, this yeah. looks great. Okay, cool. So there is one final thing that you're going to have to do with your fruit trees. It's a painful one. And we actually have the perfect example here. We have a fruit here and can't I'll let you say it cause I really don't want to do it, but we're going to have to do it. So tell us what we need to do in the first couple years of its life to really give it a good start. Well, fruit takes energy to make. And what we want this tree to do right now is to spend all of its energy putting out strong roots and creating a strong structure. So that means that you've got to, for at least the first season, remove all of the fruit on your tree. It kills you, you bought it, you planted it. I don't, like this. It. I don't but, like this, I don't like this. But, but, however, I will say, we have a Washington navel, we're actually in the ripening season. Yes. And so I'm gonna venture to say that this one's probably either ripe or very close to ripe. And so if we have to do it, why don't we just at least enjoy it together it. as we talk it. about some <laughs> final things. So let's get to that. At this point, we've taken you all the way through from a potted plant into the ground with almost every consideration I could possibly think of. <laughs> thanks to Cam, I was peppering him with questions. And we have to do the unthinkable, which is remove this Washington navel here and enjoy it. But Cam, I, I think there's a couple things that we wanna talk about Number one, as I tr struggle to get this off here, I think probably just pulling it would have been a better move, but let's open it up. Let's see what it looks like. At the same time, you know, first couple years of growth, what am I looking for? Oh, that's juicy, dude. Coming out that's of That's actually looking really good. <laughs> and don't, don't use a knife like I'm using a knife, guys, because I guarantee this is probably not the most responsible way to do it. Half for you, my friend. Oh, nice, thank let's you. Let's enjoy this. Mm. This looks good. This looks really good. All right, I'm gonna cut myself a corner here. But what do I need to know after just pruning the fruit off, right, for the first year or so, general like year one care tips after, and also another question, let's say, you know, a month, two, two months goes by, am I looking for any signs of like, ooh, I didn't really plant it the right way or something's going wrong? Yeah, if something's gonna go wrong, usually your leaves are gonna be the main thing to tell you that. And so if you're noticing that the leaves are kind of folding up on themselves, then they might need some attention. Something to be aware of though is that uh, when you first plant, a tree you want to water it two maybe even three times the first week if the water's oh, wow. if the air is air is warm two times maybe the next week but one time after that most people if they're going to do something with watering they they over water their plants right because you think oh my goodness the leaves are turning yellow i gotta water like, it i gotta do and something the thing's drowning and yeah struggling. this is amazing by the way let me taste it. yeah go in go in real quick this is washington naval season right that's now so no good joke. that's actually so good mm. Woo! reminds okay. me of soccer when i was a kid i was gonna say the same thing i hated soccer but it does remind me of soccer That's right. it was like the only good part of soccer for me well anyways you're gonna look at the leaves you're gonna look for some some symptoms on the leaves you're gonna make sure you water a decent amount uh, in the first week or so and after that it, it, it's kind of just like going right let I mean, it let it grow as yeah. long as you planted it in a sunny place if there are no systemic things going on you planted it above grade a little bit should allow water to run off if there's too much you're just really looking to see if there's something going on with the leaves if you're wondering, I think watering probably is the biggest thing to pay yeah. attention to. And you can buy like an inexpensive moisture meter for eight bucks or something. And a little probe goes down there, can let you know. You don't want the soil to be dry and you don't want it to be wet. If you notice that it's moving toward the dry section, give it a nice deep watering yep. through a slow hose in a very slow rate so that it sinks down and doesn't just run off. Yeah. And okay. uh, this is going to take care of itself. It wants to grow. So it wants to grow. Well, hey. Cam's channel is a wealth of information. It's the Busy Gardener, it'll be linked down below. Thanks for helping me out in the first tree planting here at the Epic Homestead. So awesome. Can't thank you enough, my friend. Until next time, good luck in the garden and keep on growing.